That media starting? day. We do have Lakers. Oh, media day first. In person media day. It finally. We're back. We're live. We're live. In uh, eleven a.m. I want to say Pacific days. time. Eleven a.m. to two p.m. Correct. It's always a good few hours. It's yeah. actually a really fun day. Yeah. Are you I excited? What are you day. looking forward to most? Uh, honestly, I think just being back there, yep. um, and doing it in person. Uh, it's really it's I I haven't seen any of the guy, any of the play, well not there's only a couple left that that, that we know but yeah. <laughs> right. um, but I just haven't seen people face to face. I mean we had Darwin come in here, but I haven't seen anyone you know just the Laker organization that we know that works there. We haven't seen them in a couple of years. Haven't been over there you know here and there you're over there to interview guys and stuff, but um, just not like it used to be. So I'm um, I'm actually looking forward to that. Love when we lead the show and you know we've been fortunate to have LeBron right away. That's always pretty awesome. I know Dave sent over the list. Uh, to the Lakers, we'll have some great people at our desk. Uh, and, Brez, you'll be getting a ton of guys that don't come to the desk. So you'll, you'll hear from everyone. Oh, yeah. You'll It'll hear be everyone. a busy day. I love, I love Media Day. Always have. Part of it is we just had a five-and-a-half-month break from our last Laker game. I and mean, we've still been doing shows and obviously this podcast. But I always like seeing players after not seeing them for months and months and months, You know, especially when, if Kobe would come to training camp after maybe a really bad playoff run. And Kobe did not do a lot of off-season media. And this is mostly before Twitter and Instagram when they were last winning championships. But just to hear what he had to say that first day of training camp, how driven he was, especially after they lost in 2008 to Boston in Game 6 in the NBA Finals. I I wanted to hear what he had to say at training camp. And it was like every ear in L.A. was riveted on what Kobe had to say that year at training camp. Now this year, different story. Obviously underachieving last year, 33 wins. So I'm curious, you know, what's the talk going to be about Russ? You know, how does AD look? How many questions is he going to face about two years in a row he's played half a season? How's LeBron looking? You know, we, we see a lot of LeBron on Instagram, so I have a pretty good idea of how he's looking. But I always love days like this for the big picture stories. I would have loved this network that we're on back when I was a fan in the early 2000s and like Showtime era and all that stuff. Because one thing we do great, I am going to pat ourselves on the back right now because our company does an awesome job in this, our network cover these kind of events. Yeah. Like you will hear from everyone. You, you'll have three hours. You'll be able to watch it throughout the day. If you come home at night and you missed it, we'll be playing it again. It's mm-hmm. always really cool. And I'm always proud of that, that day that we put, put together. It's a great call. Yeah. Kobe's last game events like that. We've done very well in the past. Super excited about it. Yeah. It's gonna be awesome. Absolutely. Um, with the addition you mentioned of Dennis Schroeder, um, I think a, <laughs> a big question or what many people are wondering or looking at is, is the backcourt. Crowded, I think, if people, you will. We might have this. Do we have this conversation maybe with uh, who was on our show? We were kind of briefly talking about it a little bit, I thought. Mark Medina. Mark Medina. Yeah. But for $2 million to get Dennis Schroeder as a yeah. backup point guard, a guy who's delivered in this league, who played for this organization before as a starter on a team that was, I know I mentioned this today, 21 and 6 at one point until the injuries hit. Um, I think it's great. And and I, w- I think what sticks out the most, and I know I said this to you, Brez, um, what they didn't have last year that was glaring from the moment they stepped on the floor in the preseason was strong perimeter defense. Mm-hmm. All those guys were gone. Every p- great perimeter defender they had over the last couple of years was gone. Uh, Caruso, KCP, uh, Dennis, Kuz, who was a great wing defender and became, who, who, you know, turned himself into a solid guy that, that was versatile and, and can guard on the perimeter. They lost that, and, and it was glaring. Dennis helps, helps that area, something they desperately need. Mm-hmm. Desperately need. Love that breakdown. You know, I covered hockey for a while, including the LA Kings for the LA Times. And ho- hockey teams have two different types of players that, that are meant to really antagonize the opponent. One's pretty obvious, the enforcer. It's a big dude. It's, it's a Marty McSorley. Like we, Geet and I both know him. Uh, he, he protected Wayne Gretzky's back for years and years and years. And hockey teams usually have a second type of guy, smaller, uh, like a mouthy irritant, a guy who just kind of chirps at people. and In try, your way at all times. Get in your way. Decent player, like for the Kings, who was Sean Avery for years, just pissing off everyone. And, and the Lakers, they don't have an enforcer. Not, not many teams do have a big, you know, angry enforcer in the NBA. But they now have two mouthy irritants you know if you look at pat bev and now schroeder these guys are feisty they're going to get in your face they're going to make you work um i i, I like the pickups and like you said geet uh, uh, the the minimum salary for him was 2.6 million so that's a great pickup average 14 points and four assists for a very good boston team last season 